Today I'm machining these toggle arms. Today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. If you want to find out how you can get a free trial of Skillshare, hang around till the end. All right, well, the toggle arm is looking really, really nice. We've got the sides machined flat. We've got it relieved so we can put our bronze thrust washer in there. We've got this hole drilled out so we're ready to put our bronze bushing in. We've got the ears carved out for our toggle links to sit inside. We've got three holes to drill left. One here, one here, and one right there. These are gonna have the pin that goes through the toggle links as well, and this is where the spring washer is going to sit. This hole needs to be 7 eighths of an inch. Now I don't have a 7 8 inch drill bit. What I do have is this 22 millimeter drill bit, which is pretty dang close. It's a little bit undersized. And I have a 7 8 inch reamer. So this is our last drilling operation. We're gonna go ahead and drill our pilot hole with this bit right there for our spring washer. And then we're gonna ream it out to a little over 3 quarters of an inch. So arm number one is looking really, really nice. We've got two holes left to drill. That's gonna be up here and right there, but that's gonna be after we get our bronze bushing in there, and I'm gonna wait to do that until I can do both of them at the same time. So for now, we're gonna get rocking and rolling, milling on the second arm. So, two excellent pieces of news. First off, on the mill, the table isn't moving all the way over on the x-axis, and I think I know what's happening, but when I was getting ready to address that issue, I got a call from the people who are heat treating the dyes, and they, they let me know that there's a very significant crack that occurred during heat treating in one of the dyes. So, just having a good time right now. Mmm, yeah. That's kind of a big deal. So, a couple bits of information. The bridge port was not broken. The wrench was on the vise, and it was stopping itself right here. So, I'm just an idiot. It's okay. Two, I'm going to be going back to Spokane to make some new dyes with Jason probably next week. So, you guys will get some great footage of that. And three, we're gonna go ahead and continue with the machining on the toggle arm. I'm so excited because today's such a great day. The toggle arms slash side arms are pretty much finished. We still gotta pop those bronze washers in there, but we're waiting on a delivery of oxygen so we can get these things hot enough to do that. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and ruin these beautiful toggle links that Alec made a couple episodes ago. Essentially what we're gonna do 
is just kind of mill down uh, an equal amount off of both sides so that they'll fit inside of the side arms here. You see I forged them a little bit small and I wanted to make sure that I had enough meat around the ears here that would hold them in. And so I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of width on the toggle arms to make it fit. We've got both toggle links fitting inside the toggle arms themselves. That's super exciting. Now that we have oxygen again, we can heat these suckers up and drop those bearings in and let it cool down. And then we'll be able to test it in the crosshead. So what we have going on right now is that thing is very, very stuck. So what we're gonna do is hopefully make it unstuck with the use of force. The way that we're gonna do that is by throwing this inch and a quarter piece of cold roll into the lathe, turning it down to inch and an eighth, or just under inch and an eighth, throwing it all in the hydraulic press and just trying to pop that sucker out of there. Fortunately, we know just how much we mess things up here, so I actually bought an extra bushing just in case this happened. And I'm very glad that I did because, hmm, surprise, surprise, we messed things up. Let's go ahead and turn this thing down. That looks like it works pretty good. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. That works fantastic. Ah, good. Just what I was hoping for. What happened? I don't know. This got stuck in there. Yeah. While I was trying to put it in, it just stopped moving. So then I made it, made this. Oh no, now it's stuck. And now it's stuck. I, I have an idea. What I'm gonna do is throw this in the press and then put something in there to push it out. We have an issue. Oh, jeez. That is galled to all heckin' back. I have a plan. <laughs> Here's the plan. What you said last time. <laughs> We're gonna cut this off and do the exact same thing as before. Look at that. Easy as pie. Can you believe that? This is why we use bronze as the two wear surfaces for the moving parts, because we, we, we don't want that happening um, inside of a moving power hammer. I brought a trailer in today so I can move a bunch of the stuff that I have in here over to the new shop. So we got everything loaded up. And these are all things that I got kind of absolute scores on. All of these vices I found uh, mostly on Craigslist. I got this one for $200, which is kind of amazing. I got this one for 250. This one weighs 200 pounds. This one weighs 250 pounds. I got this one for 60 bucks, which is amazing because it's a beautiful swivel jaw vise. I got this chop saw for about $100 a couple years ago. I bought this power hammer for 500 bucks, which is an absolute score. Uh, it's a wonderful little hammer. And then I got this little mini shaper that you guys I don't think ever saw for 250 bucks. I've spent about 1500 bucks on 1500 pounds of rusty old iron, which is absolutely amazing. The cost to make these things today would be astronomical. So I think it's really funny that people will just almost throw away stuff like this if it's not working exactly right. It just takes a little elbow grease and you can have yourself some nice tools when you're patient and you wait for them. Now that we've got the bronze bushings in here, what we're gonna do is ream them out to exactly 7 eighths of an inch.
have a problem. <laughs> Believe it or not, this isn't currently fitting. I think a large part of the issue is this mushrooming right here. So we're gonna go grind that off, and then we're gonna see if it fits, and if that doesn't fit, then we're gonna grind around the eye. All right, so we got the first one test fit in here and it doesn't look like there's room for both washers. It also kinda looks like, it kinda looks like the ears are bent out. That wouldn't really surprise me based off of the fact that this whole hammer is beat to heck, but that's not good. We'll get the other one on there and see what we think. That is not the sound of a happy crosshead. Um, that is the sound of some very, very very sloppy holes. We might have to bush these wallowed out crosshead holes. We're gonna go ahead and try to put the whole linkage assembly together and see how it works out. How in the world are you supposed to get this together? This spring is too long. We can cut it. So if the spring is too long, can't you just push it together? You wanna try pushing this together, Isaiah? Well, I know you can. Go ahead, have a feel. <laughs> go ahead, feel it. Oh, so it's supposed to be six inches long and it's about eight and one eighth. Now this is a little bit smaller than the original spring. The wire is a little bit smaller than it's supposed to be. So I'm going to cut it a little bit oversized. There we go. All right, we can now go ahead and test out the toggle links. So now that we've got the whole linkage except for the ram in there, we're going to go ahead, flip this puppy around, and use the chain hoist to get the ram fit up inside the hammer. Oh my goodness. That'd do it now, wouldn't it? Will, you've made an entire power hammer linkage from scratch. That's oh amazing. Oh my goodness, thank you. Everything looks like it might work. It's still sticking, I can't get it to do a full revolution. So I've got the ram blocked up, and now I'm gonna let the pitman adjust side to side. I want to better explain what's going on here. As I spin the flywheel, the ram starts to bind in the guides because it looks like it isn't being pulled up square. If the ram is binding, the hammer is functionally unusable, so we're going to loosen the mechanism so it can self-adjust and see if that solves the issue. Okay, so I just called my friend Kevin Willie, and he suggested trying to shorten up the stroke a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the chain hoist around the bottom of this four x four, and then we're gonna lift up the ram so we can shorten the stroke up here. So, before we got to even taking it all the way apart, Kevin called back and suggested that we check to make sure that the wrist pin in here is square with the dovetails that are cut. It would make sense that this would be uh, a part that would fail since I think it's the smallest, weakest part on the whole hammer. I think this is our culprit, but we'll see. Today is not the best day. Things are not going very well. I'm not quite sure exactly why it's not working, but it's not. I just let Alec know that I probably should have done this project in a different workshop so that everything could have gone smoothly. Steel's law. Steel's law. Everything here takes four times longer than it would anywhere else. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I talked to my friend Kevin Willie. He gave me a couple ideas of things to work on. I went and had a nap in my car to get the sadness out. It didn't work. So we're gonna call it there for today's episode. But before we end it, let's thank today's sponsor. Today's episode has been sponsored by Skillshare. With 25,000 video courses, you can learn anything with them. But if you are wanting to capitalize on this busy selling season that is coming up, if you're in a small business, I think you would do well to invest in learning how to take better product photos so that you can capitalize on this busy season. This is DIY Project Photography by Rachel Gulotta, and you can get the skills to take your business or your hobby to the next level by taking courses like this on Skillshare. The first thousand of you guys that click my link in the description down below are going to be getting a free trial of Skillshare Premium, which is usually just about 10 bucks a month afterwards. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this.
See you soon. Bye-bye.